Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Ward from Microsoft. Welcome to a special edition of Azure SQL for Beginners on Performance, a guide to performance troubleshooting with Azure SQL. In today's episode, we're going to start diving in to those scenarios we talked about in the introduction, and the first scenario is a high CPU problem due to a missing index. Now, you might remember that we had this technique we talked about in the introduction about how to attack a performance problem. It's either running or waiting. It's either a high CPU problem or a low CPU problem, which could be a waiting issue. Today, we're going to look at a high CPU problem. And if you remember the different scenarios we talked about that we're going to cover in this series, today's series is going to focus on that high CPU problem that is related to or due to a missing index. Now, what we're going to do in this series for each scenario is give you a troubleshooting process. So we're going to talk about a step-by-step -step process that we're going to do for each scenario. And then we will show you a demonstration of that process. But don't forget, anytime you're looking through these videos, you can go to the Azure SQL Workshop and see and try the scripts yourself for each scenario. So for this scenario, what we're going to do is start off and say, yes, we've identified a high CPU problem, and we're going to show you how to do that. Then we're going to go and find what are the top resource consuming queries or queries by CPU because it's a high CPU problem. Now, it's possible that what we're going to do is look at a query plan for one of these queries that has a top resource consuming by CPU. And we're going to see, is there an index missing? What you're going to love is, in some cases, SQL Server can make recommendations based on your query performance pattern that an index could be used to solve your problem. What we'll do then is we'll go apply that recommended index and then we'll go see if performance has been improved. So let's go see it in action. We're going to start here with a database we've created in Azure SQL Database. And you can see here on the left, and we're going to create a table for customer data. We're going to have like a unique key, we're going to have a customer ID field and detail information about the customer. We're going to populate some data, you can see here, and then what we're going to do is create a stored procedure to select and go get data by this unique ID. So you can see here, there's a select statement that will take that parameter value and go look up a specific customer. So let's go use the technique that we talked about to see if a problem is running or waiting, and we'll start with the Azure portal. And we talked about the fact that you're going to use something called compute utilization to go see if you have a performance problem. So we talked about the way to start with a performance problem, running versus waiting, is to use the Azure portal to look at something called compute utilization. You can see here in the Azure portal, here is my Azure SQL database I've deployed. So what I'll do on this overview page is click on monitoring and go down below and look at compute utilization. You can see in this chart right here for CPU percentage, we have this window of time where we have a sustained 100% CPU consumption on our database. <clears throat> this is a key signature to a high CPU problem that we're going to narrow down. So what's our next step we talked about in our process? Let's go identify queries that might match that. <clears throat> so I'm back over here in Management Studio, and this is where we're going to use the query store. In Management Studio, for my database, I will go to the query store and use a report called Top Resource Consuming Queries to look at which queries consume the most CPU. You can see there are several different panes in this query. And the lower pane, it shows the query that's involved. You can see here in the plan at the bottom, it's using a table scan. I already know it's not using an index. But also, I can do different types of metric data. I can look at duration, an average duration for that query. And you can see here, it's almost about two seconds to run. But what's really nice, I can flip over and look at the average CPU time for this query. And I can hover here to the right and look at for the plan and see that it's almost like a second of CPU time running for this specific query. Now we already know by looking at the bottom here that SQL Server has recommended a missing index that could help our performance. So let's do this. Let's right click on this in this window right here and see if there's a recommendation that can help us. I can see now in a query window, SQL Server has recommended a syntax to create an index that might help the performance of our query. So I'd like to go implement that. So what I've done is I've built a script that mirrors what that looks like. And in this script, I'll give a name, like a, a name that makes sense for my index. You can kind of see that right here. On the table called customers, 
on the tab key column, because that's what we're going to search on, that tab key column. Now, I've added a few syntax details. I've added online and resumable, which are options, so when you create your index, you keep your application as highly available as possible. So let's go create this index, and let's see if performance has been improved any, and what we'll do is we'll go look at, maybe down at our workload to see if performance has changed. So, with this index applied, I'm going to go down here, and in these scenarios, we use a tool called OStress to do these workloads. And you can see, when I ran it before, it took like 10 minutes to run this workload. So, let's go see what it looks like again, for like five users you can see right here. Let's go see what it looks like again with the index applied. So, I'll run the workload again, and wow, look at that, under a second. We were 10 minutes, now we're like under a second to run the same workload, and all we did is apply the index itself. Let's go back here and see the query store reports and refresh it to see what's going on. Now you can see at the bottom down here for this query that we have an index seek going on for our query. So instead of the table scan, which is more expensive, use a lot of CPU, for that same query, we're now using an index. And we can go over here and see what was the average CPU. Wow, look at that. You can see now the average CPU is less than a millisecond now for this query. We significantly improve the performance. Now, what I'd like to do, though, is make sure that over time, like an extended period of time, this performance will hold true. So I ran that workload with a bunch of executions. Same type of thing using that index. And Query Store can show me that data. So I can kind of hover over here to the right, and I can kind of see, uh, based on, you, you can hover over these dots here to the right, and it can kind of see, for this index seek, what did that performance look like? Was it consistent using that index? So if I hover over, you can see the number of executions, it looks like about 500,000. So I ran it 500,000 times with the index, and I got the same average CPU performance. That's the kind of consistent performance I'm looking for in this scenario. Let's go back to the portal now, though, and prove that things are better. Look at compute utilization. You can see, look at this now. Much shorter duration of time for that workload, much less CPU, significantly less than before. So now we effectively have resolved a high CPU problem that we've had with our workload by looking for a missing index with a query plan, recommended by SQL Server, applying it, and resolving the problem. So in summary, remember, problems are running versus waiting. Find out what queries are involved, which we did here. We found the top resource-consuming query by CPU. We checked the query plan and we saw that SQL Server recommended a missing index. Then we created that index and confirm our problem has been resolved. We want you to continue to have resources to solve problems like this, so at the top you can see here our index design guide. You're going to get more details on how to build indexes for SQL Server. And in addition, look at the other resources we have here to the left, different resources for videos, workshops, including the scripts for the scenario we just described, Microsoft Learning Path, and other resources from our team, including some books that you can dive further on Azure SQL. I hope you've enjoyed this episode on a special edition for Azure SQL for Beginners, where we took a look at a high CPU problem and built an index to resolve it. Hope to see you next time on a special edition of Azure SQL for Beginners.